before I, before I get to the, the presentation, um, I guess uh, four years ago uh, we were joint ventures in a UHT plant and, uh, and one of our customers overseas was wanting uh, some organic milk, uh, some long life organic milk and so I hit the phones and rang around um, as many people as I could think of uh, to try and source some organic milk, could not get anything. And I thought, well, that's a bit, a bit strange. And then um, a few months later uh, at our supplier Christmas party at ACM, we, we put on a, a Christmas party for our suppliers. And five, five years ago, there weren't that many people because we, we had about 80 million litres of milk. Now the Christmas parties are going to be bigger because we've got about 450 million litres of milk and, uh, and, and growing. But at that Christmas party, uh, one of our suppliers said, oh, I'm really interested in organic and we started talking and, and he'd, been, uh, he'd been putting on a lot of synthetic fertiliser onto his farm, been put it, using a lot of herbicides, pesticides, and every time he did it he was getting quite sick, he was noticing that his farm, the soil was getting harder, and, and one year he decided, oh, well, I'll, I'll just cut back a bit on, on the fertiliser, and, uh, and uh, he, uh, he noticed uh, very quickly that the farm started to, to actually go backwards, so he rang his rang his uh, fertiliser rep who came and told him, what are you doing? He said, well, I've, I've cut, cut back a bit because you know, I just don't like what it's doing to my soil. He goes, no, 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 no. He said, you've got to put more on, more on, more on. And, and with this, the farmer said, oh, the only moron around here is me because I'm, I'm spending more money every year and my land's going backwards. And so with that, uh, this farmer who's just out of Camperdown, who's now uh, certified organic, went to a composting system and he's seen a real change uh, in, his, in his land. And if we get time, I'll, I'll get to a short video on that. But um, so really today, I just want to sort of share our experiences in, in what we've learned about uh, going down the, the organic path and, and really working with our suppliers who, who wanted to go down that path within our network of suppliers, but also people from outside of our network of suppliers who've, who have come in. And, and it's really, uh, we, we call it busting the myths about organic milk because there's a lot of people who tell you why you can't do it. And uh, we, we feel as though we've put together a, a package of support that actually helps people do it. Um, but really, f for you to be able to go and talk to a supplier who's interested, you, know, you really need to provide a value proposition to them. And, um, um, for that, you need to be able to have a, a premium price, so you need to be adding value to what they're doing, but you have also need to be careful that they're not adding more cost than the value that you're able to get from the milk coming out the other side, um, because then you're back to, to, where, to where you were. Um, the path to becoming an accredited organic dairy farmer is, is three years, um, so you need to be able to demonstrate that you haven't used any um, herbicides, pesticides, synthetic fertiliser, uh, or treatments uh, with the cows for, for three years. Um, and uh, so that means that you know, the, the, the longest period is three years to get the accreditation. But if you've actually been farming that way for a certain period of time, there's a minimum period or an in-conversion period of, of one year. So it is a quite, a, quite a commitment. But there's also some non-financial values uh, in, in heading down, down that path from you know, the, on the occupational health and safety uh, side of things and sustainability, biodiversity, etc. Um, but also, we needed to make sure that we were able to provide value from the milk that we were that we were producing, that we could turn it into products that the consumer is looking for to find markets, to find uh, potential customers. And um, um, as part of that, we needed to have some processing. We, we wanted to ensure that the supply and demand uh, was was in favour of heading down, down this path. We didn't want to encourage suppliers to, to increase their production of, or the production of organic milk, which I think at that time there was only about 30 million litres of milk, uh, of organic milk in Australia. And I, th I think there's only about you know, 80 or 90 million litres uh, in the whole country now. So it's not a big pool of milk. Um, but we wanted to make sure that by encouraging our suppliers to head down that path that we weren't going to um, absolutely flood the market and then and then ruin any benefit or, or price premium that was there in the market. We also, uh, quite topically, um, we wanted to make sure we could access uh, markets and there's been some really good work 
uh, by the Australian government in, in uh, reducing or, or forming the uh, FDAs. You know, China's a big one, you know, Indonesia in the last 24 hours. So these things are, are really big benefits for, for everyone in agriculture and particularly in dairy. Um, we also knew that we needed to have a very lean and efficient supply chain, and that's one of the fundamentals of our, our business generally. So we knew we needed to do that well um, with organics. And then the last thing, we, we, we sort of saw that organic products were quite expensive, so we, what we were wanting to try and do was bring organic products to market at a level that was affordable for, for the consumers, and yet um, yeah, you know, we're not. When when you talk about organic, you're not going to feed the world with organic product. There's there's just not enough of it. It is a niche market, uh, but it's a niche market that's growing not just in Australia but but globally. So some of the key indicators, uh, um, and these have come from the Australian Organic Magazine 2017. Um, yeah, you know, the the. The markets are growing, grew by, uh, Australian exports of organic products grew by 17% in 2016. Uh, the demand for organic milk is definitely there. We're actually importing as much um, organic milk as we are producing organic milk in the country. So we know that we can expand to, to take out that amount of milk to start with without uh, uh, starting to push down um, or starting to impact on the uh, demand in the market. Uh, the supermarkets are the main um, are the main outlet for the products. Uh, Forty seven percent of Australian shoppers purchased organic um, dairy in two thousand and sixteen, so that's up from thirty four percent only a few years earlier. So it, so it is growing. But this is the one that I thought was really interesting. That um, when you look at the barriers to why consumers aren't buying organic products, you know, they're obviously looking at it, they're at the, in, on the shelves in the supermarkets, but 76% uh, uh, of people in the survey cited cost of organic products as the reason why they don't, don't buy it. So it's a massive barrier. Uh, the other one was trust. Um, uh, you know, has it been actually um, certified as organic by an accredited agency or is it just someone's just labelled it organic? Um, and the other one was availability. People would go along to buy it and it just wouldn't be, be, be there anymore. But in looking at that, we, we felt that that was something that we could, we could do something about. And also globally, the, the market's growing. It's over 100 billion um, uh, Aussie dollars in the global market. Um, and, and you know, we just see that um, continuing to grow. And, and as the um, Asian middle class gets bigger, we see that that demand is going to continue to grow. So when we first started talking to our farmers about it and other people about you know, what, would, what it would take to become an organic dairy farmer, everyone seemed to come up with a reason as to why you can't. Oh, I can't do it because you know, it's going to ruin, you know, I can't live without my fertiliser and, and you know, all, the, you know, all the weeds, you know, what am I going to do about the weeds? And oh, yeah, apparently there's, there's no organic feed around, you can't get organic grain and if you do it's $1,000 a tonne, which it probably is at the moment. But, um, you know, very expensive and oh, look, I love, my, I love my cows too much. I, I couldn't go to a system where I don't look after my cows. Um, and then you know, people say, oh yeah, but the costs are so much and I'm not going to be able to produce as much, as much milk and you know, my solids are going to drop. And so there's all these reasons. And then other people, of course, you know, no one likes doing administration and then like, oh God, all the paperwork I'd have to do. I, I don't, I don't want to do that. So we looked at them and thought, oh yeah, there's a fair, there's a fair few hurdles here that we, we need to try and try and look at. But it was amazing. The more the more we looked at it and the more people we spoke to, we actually worked out, well, we actually think we can do this and we think we can actually help our suppliers get there. And so we set about building a program that we called Mythbusters and we ran sessions uh, with our suppliers who were interested and we, we weren't trying to we certainly weren't trying to force them down the path but we were saying come and have a listen and see what the experts have to say talk to people who are already already doing it and um, then you can make up your own mind and so we put together a program where we had people talking and we got that the same farmer came and talked about his composting uh, we had um, other people come to talk about other organic uh, fertilizers that are available we actually set up a, we had a company that we'd just set up called Direct Feeds Australia and uh, you know, one of the main roles of that company now is to make sure we can source organic feed for our organic dairy farmers and we've actually purchased organic 
uh, grain farms to produce grain for those uh, to supply our um, dairy farmers, our organic dairy farmers, and we've worked on an organic pallet. And so we've really tried to develop that because having the feed to, f um, to get to the cows and, and doing it in a way that's affordable is, is really important. And so over the last um, few months when organic uh, grain and inputs have been uh, extremely expensive, you know, over $1,000 a tonne, we've been able to get it to our farmers at six or $700 a tonne, so a bit of a, bit of a saving there. Uh, the other thing about the, the herd, the, the actual, while the land has to be able to be demonstrated that it's three years without um, any uh, uh, chemical um, synthetic substance, uh, the cows only need to be treated for the last, um, or treated organically for the last six months to be a dairy cow. If, if you're wanting to um, uh, sell the cow as organic meat, then it has to be organic all the way through. But if you're, if you're supplying milk from that cow, it only needs to be organic in the last six months. So that helps with uh, suppliers uh, working through that process. And we also help them, which I'll, I'll get to um, in that last six months. The other thing is the, the finances. And um, we've got, uh, we, we engaged a consultant who had 20 years of experience in organic farming and consultancy uh, to work up with the farmers uh, five year plans as to what it would look like financially. Yeah, because there's no doubt the, the farm can go backwards a little bit in that process uh, and we wanted to take the stress of uh, the conversion out because you know farming is very stressful as we all, as we all know and so to be able to create a plan to remove some of the uncertainty uh, gave uh, the suppliers a bit more heart and a bit more confidence to actually uh, head down that path and finally we um, uh, we engaged uh, or employed a, a staff member to, to actually go and get the paperwork, sit with the farmer, go through the farm, the paperwork with the farmer, submit it and follow up any, any of the admin that needed to happen and, and we paid for, for all of that and plus all the costs of administration through, through that process because not everyone likes admin and I'm not very good at it and if it was at my house I'd probably sit on the kitchen table for six months but by having someone there who could actually hold, take me and, and, and um, take me through it and help me um, we found that that got people going and got people excited about, about doing that. So there's some of the things that, that we did to try and help our, our suppliers um, you know, work through that process. Another, another aspect, um, so those of you who are a little bit familiar with, with ACM a couple of things that we've tried to do in the market is try and bring some stability of price, try and give some price um, certainty, and and we, we, we really um, do what we say we're going to do. And with the organic strategy, we really employed those same those same principles. And is that it's 30. 30 minutes? Thank you. Um, and so the the organic milk price is really quite quite stable. Um, and the premium over conventional is more, a, is more a function of the underlying volatility of the conventional rather than the, the volatility in the organic milk price. And so, um, but with that, with the organic milk coming on, we knew that we were going to have to find a way to extract the value of that milk and convert that milk into a more storable form. Um, so we've built a, a factory up at Gagari and um, um, my, my mum keeps asking me, how, how do you say it again? I said, well, it's Gagari, and she could never do it. I said, well, think of Gary with a stutter, and then she's you know, finally got it. Um, so what we do, in the last six months, we pay, our, we pay our farmers an extra 50 cents per kilo of milk solids just to help them over that last bump. Um, we have a Facebook page, we have um, our farm, work, farm works. We guarantee $8 uh, per kilo of milk solids uh, for three years once you become accredited. And we are currently paying uh, an average of eight dollars ninety for our for our farmers at the moment. Um, just quickly, yeah. So so for us to be able to, to extract the value, um, we need to be able to convert the milk into um, powder. So we're making skim milk powder, whole milk powder, um, butter. Um, we're making cheese. Uh, and, and we can do fresh milk as well, and that'll be for the domestic and export markets. We've done a, a contract with Bellamy's, they've been uh, fantastic supporters of ours. And um, uh, we've also, for the first time in our, his, in our um, history, which is we're about to start our 12th year as a company, um, we're, we're launching our own brand. So we're, we're really doing everything we can to, to help uh, support 
our suppliers and support the, um, the organic products and they'll be in supermarkets very soon. So finally, um, uh, going back to the original slide, um, the, the price, uh, it's 50% you know, more than uh, current conventional and it's less volatile. We've got the pr uh, support program in place. Uh, we can demonstrate that it helps suppliers bottom line. It's not for every supplier. If you're an intense, very intensive dairy farmer, it's probably not going to work for you with high inputs, lots of grain. But if, if you're grass pasture based and want to follow the milk curve, that's fine. We don't mind how, how peaky the milk is coming to us now that we've got the factory to process it. So I think I've covered pretty much everything there. So yeah. pressure. Pursue more with questions. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Do you have the video that you can skip